Welcome little scientists, it's Miss Gisa, and today we are going to talk about bats. At the end of the video, I'll answer a student's question and make book suggestions in case you want to learn even more about bats. Did you know that bats are mammals? That's right, bats are mammals like we humans. Mammals are part of a group of vertebrae animals. Vertebrae means having a spine. Can all of you feel your spine? Mammals also have mammary glands, which help mamas make milk for their babies. You may have had milk from your mom when you were a baby. Well, bats do the same. They drink from their mother's milk. Mammals also have hair on their bodies. We humans have hair, and so, do bats. Mammals are warm-blooded, have a heart with four chambers, and three middle ear bones. There are other characteristics of mammals, but these are the ones we'll discuss today. Bats are members of the order Chiroptera, which means they have four arms that are wings. It means handing wing in Greek. They have the same bones in their wings that we have in our arms and hands just arranged and shaped differently. Bats are the only mammal that can fly. Mammals, like flying squirrels, can glide, but not fly. There are over 1,300 kinds of bats in the world. I have a bat joke for you. Are you ready? Which bat was the first to learn their ABCs? The alphabet. <laughs> now, let's take a look at different parts of a bat. Okay, so here's our cute little bat, and we're going to label the different parts of a bat. Let's start with the first word here, tail. Can you find the bat's tail? Yeah, that's pretty easy, right there. All right, the next one is wing, the bat's wings. Yeah, those are the bat's wings, so we'll put it right there. And the next label says thumb. There's the bat's thumb. How about the foot? Yes. Here's his foot, his two feet. Here's his body. Remember, bats are mammals, so they have hair on their body. And finally, the ears, right on top, right there. Now, if you'd like, you can color your little bat diagram, and you can go ahead and draw your own bat diagram, or I'll list the source where I purchased this. Only three species of bats drink blood. Vampire bats drink blood from birds or cattle. Brazilian free-tailed bats, like the ones that live at Carlsbad Caverns, eat insects that destroy crops, which are fruits and veggies. They can travel up to 30 miles and eat half of their body weight before returning home. That would be like an adult eating 360 quarter pound hamburgers every day. Whoa. If you haven't already watched my Carlsbad Caverns National Park video, be sure to so you can learn more about these bats and their habitat at Carlsbad Caverns. Now, bats eat nectar that are helpful because they pollinate plants so that they can produce fruit. They also spread the seeds from plants so new ones can grow. Some bats eat both insects and fruit. Many of the foods that you eat have been pollinated by bats. Let's take a look. Almonds, chocolate, cashews. Now, these foods grow because bats eat the insects. Garlic, pumpkin, rice, spinach, and basil. Fruit-eating bats help these foods to grow, dates and vanilla beans. 
This reminds me of another joke. Ready? What's a baby bat's favorite food? A tasty bowl of alpha bat soup. Did you know bats' large ear structures and their face wrinkles help with echolocation? Echolocation is what bats use to find insects to eat and to fly around without bumping into things. Here's how it works. The high-pitched noises that bats make from their mouths or noses bounce off objects in their environment. These sounds help bats move around at night without getting hurt. Humans can't hear the bat sounds. Scientists think that the face wrinkles around the bat's noses help them see in the dark by focusing their sonar. Bats that use echolocation have larger ears, and bats that use their sense of smell to find food have a better sense of smell than bats with bigger ears. Bats are nocturnal. Do you remember what that means? That means that they sleep during the day and look for food at night. They sleep hanging upside down by claws on their toes. A place that bats live is called a roost. Bats move around to find the right roost. Bats can roost in caves, underside of bridges, buildings, and trees. Bats hibernate in the winter. Hibernation means a deep sleep. Bats look for cool roosts that stay at the same temperature. Oftentimes they hibernate in caves. Bats use less energy while hibernating, so they have enough fat stored to get them through the winter months without having to forage for food. Mommy bats gather together in early summer in maternity roosts. They look for warm, safe places to have their babies. Now let's take a look at the life cycle of a bat. Okay, let's put together the bat life cycle. I will go ahead and list this source um, in my show notes, but you can also draw this uh, bat life cycle at home. So the very first thing that happens is a baby bat is born and baby bats are called pups. So let's find the little pup. Here's our little pup. And we'll find the word pup. Put it there. Now pups are born alive after about 50 to 60 days in their mommy's body. When the pups are born, mommies hang upright, which is upside down for them because upside down is their normal. And the mommies catch and cradle the pups in a basket that they make with their wings. Then the pups are taken care of in a nursery. while the mommies are hunting for food. And the bats hang from the ceiling of the cave and at night they huddle together and sleep hanging from their mother. Baby bats use their teeth and claws to hold on to their mommies. While the mommies fly and roosts. If the pup lets go, he or she will fall and could die. So here, they're young bats, but they cannot fly on their own yet. They start to fly at about two to three months. And then, once the bat is one year old, it is considered an adult and can fly on its own. And then the life cycle starts over again with the adult having a pup, which is a baby, and so on and so forth, around and around. Mommy bats usually only have one pup at a time. Little scientists, I love receiving questions from you. So be sure to message me via Instagram or through my email. This question, is from Everly, and she asked whether bats have teeth. That's a great question, Everly. Bats, in fact, do have teeth. Most bats' teeth 
are very small and not that strong since they grind up insects. Other bats have sharp outer edges on their molars, which help them pierce through fruit skin and pulp. There are a few types of bats, like the hoary bat, that have large teeth to puncture their prey. Their teeth can actually break through the skin, so you don't ever want to handle a bat. Just like other animals, bats will bite in self-defense. Now, let's take a look at some of the books I've picked out just for you in case you want to do more research and learn about bats. One Small Square Cave. Shadows of Night, The Hidden World of the Little Brown Bat. For those of you that are a little older, you might enjoy science comics, Bats Learning to Fly, which is a nice graphic novel um, that teaches you about bats. Home in the Cave. The Life Cycle of a Bat. And finally, a sweet story called Night Song. Now, if you end up going to Carlsbad Caverns, you can become a junior bat biologist if you go ahead and fill out the junior ranger booklet. You can also call them and they'll send you one or download it from the National Park website. A fun place to learn more about bats is Carlsbad Cavern National Park in New Mexico. You can also watch my trip to Carlsbad Caverns on this channel. I'll put the link below. Thanks for spending time with me today learning about these marvelous bats. Remember to like and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another episode. And have a very happy Halloween. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.